everybody, this is Peter from Our Ship Sound. I've had a few requests to do a video on how I uh, overlay the blue uh, on the keys as I do these piano tutorials. So here's an example. It's playing now of a previous video that I've done with that. So I want, want to walk you through um, how I did it on this uh, the video I just recorded. So here's what we're doing. I have the camera. Sometimes I have a couple other views, but I record everything into Logic. And so here is the uh, what I recorded from my voice through the microphone. Here's what I recorded. Um, this is actually the output of main stage. And I also record the piano MIDI. And so you see all the different notes that I played there. And so what I will do is take this and I'll export this as the audio that you actually hear in the video. And then I will take the MIDI and just go up to file and export uh, selection as MIDI file. And now one thing I do actually is a trick that I've learned is that I'm going to re-record this as a screen capture. So what I do is I place the, the playhead where I actually start playing and I note the time. So this is 1 minute 22 seconds into it. So I'll go ahead and do the uh, the MIDI export and uh, it doesn't matter what I name it, but I'll just add 122 for 1 minute 22 seconds. Save that to the desktop and then that's what we need for the MIDI. Quit out of logic and then I open up a program called Mediculous. I think this is about a $50 program or something online. Uh, load desktop and load that MIDI file that we just opened. There's uh, one window that we're not seeing here. There we go. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put the playhead. I'll hit play, go one minute, um, give myself a few seconds to get started, and I'll pause it. And then I actually just use um, QuickTime to capture the screen. It's actually what I'm using right now. Um, so I'm actually going to switch here for a moment to my iPhone so I can show you how I set this up in QuickTime. We're going to go up to QuickTime, do new screen recording. And this part is really important, what I'm gonna about to do here. I'm going to click on this little arrow. And if it focuses, you'll see it says internal microphone. Okay, and the reason why that's important is because in order to line up the video, when we put it all together, you're going to want to use the audio file or the audio waveform. So uh, we're going to hit the record button, and it's not recording yet. What I do is I draw a box around the piano. So draw a box, okay, and then you click start recording, and then start your playback. Okay. So it's recording the screen, you know, by there's a little like stop button up there. Okay. So I make note of how long it's going to play. Um, and then I uh, set a timer for that. I let it run. I step out of the room. And so it's recording all that. Okay. So we'll just click stop now and I'm going to stop the recording. And then I have my screen capture recording. So now we are in final cut and I already have my, uh, my A roll here and then my overhead camera and then this is the audio file that I imported so I've already lined those up I'm going to import now the keyboard view emotion key that's what we want okay so then that shows up here and this is where it gets a little bit technical so I'm gonna put this above the overhead view okay and, and this one it's not as easy to line up here well, we are going to look for some place in the, uh, the audio file to overlay this. We're just going to do kind of a rough estimate here. This looks like it's going to line up. Let's try this. Okay. Now we can't see it because this, uh, this part is taking up the whole thing. So I'm just going to take out the opacity here. Okay, so now this takes some lining up. So what I'm going to do with my overhead view... Well, let's first of all start with this. I'm going to turn down the opacity here. I don't know how to pronounce that word. <laughs> Clip one. I'm going to rotate this. Okay, this part is tedious. Okay, so I'm going to lower this, bring it down. Uh, and I'm going to crop. This is actually going to crop the bottom because it's inverted. I'm going to take out the top. So I lower that down. Okay, now you notice along here, there's a little bit of lens distortion. So what I'm going to do um, is go to the effects. Look up for fish eye. And you think that's the opposite of what we'd want to do um, in a way it is. So we're actually going to apply a negative value for the effect. Usually a negative 0.5. And you see how that edge is nice and straight now.
So now I can come back here and I'm going to lower just a touch more. Okay, now you notice we still have the, the keys aren't straight here. Um, the straighter you can get this, the better it's going to line up with the blue keys. And so what I do is now is come down here, distort. This is actually the lower left since it's inverted. Uh, actually, let's do upper left. Let me just drag this a bit that way. Okay, and then that line looks pretty straight. That was negative 17. Let's, let's apply the same value. Uh, that positive value over there. And then our lines are pretty straight. So now we're at it, ready to add the uh, the blue keys back in. So let's bring up the opacity of that. And you can see we have much different sizes. So uh, let's first of all kind of try to line this up. So we're going to go to, uh, this usually gets me pretty close, like 147. I'm going to take down the opacity so I can kind of see both. So let's find a spot where we have a few different keys being played. Okay. Go ahead and take this all the way out, and I'm playing an F, and it looks like a G and maybe a C up there. Yeah, so the G and C. So the F is stretched too low, so we need to lower this a bit. We can shrink it, and we can slide around a little bit. If you can get your uh, your overhead angle pretty consistent. From one video to the next you can kind of get this dialed in and, and make a good preset um, get yourself closer than having to go through all these steps it's it, the first few times it is very tedious all right that's pretty close let's come down to um, distort I'm gonna make the uh, the MIDI key part taller let's try uh, negative value here and then a positive value on the top Okay, so that stretched it out vertically, and now it's going to cover more of the, the key. Okay, so I've played with the values a little bit more, and now we see that those line up pretty well. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and crank that up, uh, and we're going to apply the keyer effect now. So come down here, search for keyer, and go ahead and drag that onto your clip. All right. That is not what we want, so what we're going to actually do is invert the effect. Okay, and that's still not what we want. We need to sample the color. Let's uh, zoom in here. Sample the color, and try to get as much of the blue as you can. Okay, and then I think I drag these all the way to the left. Yeah. All right, that looks good, and then I come back here. And usually do about 70% on the opacity. So I guess two more things we need to do. And this sh I should have done earlier. But you want to crop the uh, the top part of this out. And when you do that, it's going to kind of mess up your uh, the way your keys look. So now they're just too high. So you need to come back and lower this. So now they're more in line. The final thing is that uh, when you do screen capture, the audio drifts. So this is... Uh, this is really well lined up, but if we go down here to uh, the end, this refreshes. You can see that this should probably line up here. This should line up here. So you need to go through and just kind of use your blade tool to um, to line things up a little bit better from time to time. And it takes a couple extra uh, minutes, but that's not a big deal. So anyway, uh, once you get everything set the way this is here, you want to save that as a preset um, so you don't have to go through all those steps again. Um, so anyway, good luck. Hope it goes well for you.